Hey, what is up guys and welcome back to the FCS Football Channel and today we're doing my match preview for the Manchester United versus Newcastle game. Now before we get into this video, I just have to say, unfortunately there will be no watch long for this game. Of course, number one, it's a three o'clock three o'clock kickoff, meaning it won't be on um on the telly in the UK. Second of all, obviously, as as you guys know, recently I've been in a different location. I will be travelling back on Saturday to my dad's address, I guess. So I, I won't I won't be at home to be able to watch the game anyway. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the preview. So, Manchester United come into this game having just beaten Wolves 1-0 thanks to a Mason Greenwood goal in the 80th minute in a game which Wolves were the better team. David De Gea produced an absolute worldie of a save. wan cleared one off the line. Without them two, we lose that game. On the other hand, we've got Mason Greenwood who this season has proven he has the golden touch. He is scoring goals for fun at the moment. And that is just fantastic to, to, to know because we all know how good of a player he can be and he's showing it right now in a Manchester United shirt. Obviously, that goal against Wolves, it showed what he's all about. Got the ball on the right-hand side, beat his man, shot it across goal into the back post. Should Jose Sars do better? For me, yes, he probably should. But can't take anything away from Mason Greenwood there. He has everything right. He tests the goalkeeper and makes the goalkeeper make a mistake. That's, the, that's all you can ask for from a player like Mason Greenwood. Brilliant. Newcastle, however, they played Southampton. Of course, we struggled against Southampton when we played them two weeks ago. Newcastle also struggled against them during 2 all, with James Ward-Prowse equalising for the Saints on the, in the, well, it was like the 96th minute. Newcastle should have really won the game. They took the lead in the 92nd minute through Alan St. Max, man. That should have sealed him the win, of course. When you're 2-1 up in the 90th minute, you don't expect to concede. But Jamal LaSalle's gave away a stupid penalty for a stupid challenge, which, of course, when you give a set piece to James Ward-Prowse, you only expect one thing, and that's for the net to bulge, and it did. But how does the Premier League title stand, and where do these clubs come in to this game ranked? Well, Manchester United, we sit in the top three. We sit in third in the Premier League, level on points with both West Ham and Chelsea, who are in third and fourth, while Newcastle are a point outside the relegation zone in 17th on a single point. So how did we get on against them last season? Well, we played them twice at St. James's Park and Old Trafford. At St. James's Park in the first game of last season, we beat them 4-1. They took the lead for Luke Shaw's own goal. However, Harry Maguire levelled taking it in level at half-time. Second half, we came out much, much better. And despite Bruno Fernandes missing his first penalty in a Manchester United shirt, we won 4-1 with Aaron Wan-Bissaka getting his first goal as a Manchester United player. In the second leg, we played him at Old Trafford. We won that game 3-1. Again, going in at half-time level at 1-0. Again, second half, we came out a little bit better, as we did quite often last season. Second half FC and all that. We came out in the second half, we were much better and we won the game thanks to Dan James and Bruno Fernandes both scoring. So who are the key men for this Newcastle United side? Well, it's two men, isn't it? It's Callum Wilson and Alan St. Maximin. Callum Wilson, he's so quick. He's he's quite strong, for especially for a small lad like him. He's clinical in front of goal. I think he's quite a good dribbler. He's a hassle. He will press you, he will do everything, and when you give him a chance, he'll probably put it away. And when you have someone like Alan St. Maximin, who is their other best player and key player, he's going to get that. Alan St. Maximin is a player full of flair, full of confidence, will take a man off and will, and will beat a man 99 times out of 100. He is unbelievable, Alan St. Maximin. He's got it all. He's a flair player, and flair players are always a danger to come up against. And when you've got a player like St. Maximin who can pick the ball up in defence and bring it all the way forward and create a chance. And you've got a striker like Callum Wilson who only needs one chance to score. It's a recipe for disaster for teams. Um, it will be perfect for Newcastle United on the counter-attack in this game. If I was you, I wouldn't be too concerned about both St. Maximin and Callum Wilson. On our right-hand side, we've got Aaron Wambasaka. He's a player that will win his tackles. He's so brilliantly defensively. I don't, I don't think Alan St. Maximin will be at his best. And we've got Harry Maguire and Raphael Varane to try and stop Callum Wilson. They, it won't be an easy game for them too. I think we'll be fine. 
going into team news, we don't have many injuries to be fair at the moment. Obviously, we know about the situation around Marcus Rashford. He's had his surgery on his shoulder. He's just kind of waiting for his recovery to finish and for him to then get match fit. Fred is quite an interesting one. Of course, all the Premier League teams decided not to send into players out on international duty if they was going to have to return and quarantine. Fred was one of those players who who weren't able to go out to play for Brazil. Brazil have then contacted FIFA and exercised one of the rules, meaning now Fred and a host of other Brazilian players like Alisson, like Edison, like Firmino, so on and so forth, can't play for their club. So for, for Fred, obviously Manchester United, in the next five days. So that would mean he will miss, obviously, this game against Newcastle and Young Boys midweek. When it comes to McTominay, of course, we know he had that injury. He's back in training now. Whether he is match fit, we don't know, but he is back in training. Jaden Sancho is a player that picked up a knock during international um, duty with England. However, the reports are it was only a minor knock. It wasn't anything really serious and he will be available for selection in this game. And with all that in mind, let's get in to what I believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will pick. And this is it. I think he will go for David De Gea in goal. De Gea is undroppable at the moment. He saved us against Southampton, saved us against Wolves. He's our number one, numero uno. Stick him in goal. Back four, I've said it every week. This is the back four. It's going to get repetitive. Like Lindelof, um, Maguire, Shaw and Wambasaka got last year. This is it. Varane, Maguire, Luke Shaw, Wambasaka. It's the back four we're going to see every week. And I want to see every week. In DMs, I think he'll go with Matic and Pogba. I think maybe McTominay. I'm not. I'm just not sure how fit he is. So I've put Matic in there alongside Pogba as what I think Oli will go for. I think if McTominay is fit, however, McTominay will play alongside Pogba. I think go Sancho off the left. Greenwood off the right, Bruno at 10, and Cristiano Ronaldo up top. There is no way Cristiano Ronaldo isn't starting for me. Absolutely no chance. Sancho, Oli's played him off the left quite a bit at the start of this season. I don't see why that changes today. Greenwood out on the right. He showed he can score goals from that right-hand side. Did it against Wolves. Why not play? He, he's, he's undroppable at the moment, Mason Greenwood. He, you could, if he's not playing up top because Ronaldo's there, play him off the right or play him off the left. This is the team I would go for, however. I would go for the same defence, same midfield pivot, to be fair. But I'm making one change, well, technically two. I'm swapping Greenwood and Sancho around. For me, Jadon Sancho's long-term future as a Manchester United player is as a right winger. He won't be a left winger when Rashford's back. So why not start creating and developing that relationship between Wan-Bissaka and Jadon Sancho because Mason Greenwood can play off the left. We saw with his goal against Leeds, that shot where across, across the goal, he can do it from both sides. So play him off the left, where he's got Luke Shaw. He's he's played with a lot, played him for England here and there. Well, at least been in training camps. He, Greenwood, I don't think he's actually played for England. I think he might have had five or ten minutes. So th- they've, got, they've got a relationship. And realistically, Greenwood's long-term future is as a striker. It's not as a winger. It says a number nine. So, while obviously you want to build these relationships with the fullbacks as a striker still, it's not as important as Sancho, who will be playing on the right week in, week out. So, uh, that is the only change I would make from that starting 11. Plus, with Cristiano Ronaldo up top, if you look at Cristiano Ronaldo's heat map from his time at Juventus, while well, you can see he used to be a left winger, he drifts out to that left winger a bit, which opens the door up for Mason Greenwood, who I have starting on the left, to drift into that central role, kind of be versatile, like we saw with Martial, Rashford and Greenwood at the end of, was it the 1920 season? Um, after lockdown, when we smashed Sheffield United, smashed Bournemouth, so on and so forth. That is a danger for any team, and that is exciting. So I would actually go with Greenwood off the left, Sancho off the right. However, look, I'm fine with playing them on the other way. I have a second team which I, I, I will consider playing. And it's this. And that's... The, the, your eyes don't deceive you. I've put Donny van der Beek in a midfield pivot with Paul Pogba. Is it crazy? Of course it's crazy. However, hear me out. This is a game we are expecting to dominate. We're expecting to have majority of the ball. Just go for it. We've got Cristiano Ronaldo up top. I think that defence can look after itself. 
Donny van der Beek can play as a six. He said that himself during an interview and has done it for Ajax. He's not an ideal lone DM. And I don't think in this pivot he will have to. I think Pogba, you get him to do some defensive duties as well. And I think with them two, you have two players that can unlock a door like that. And look, if it's not working, like I said, that defence is good enough to hold out until at least half time. Or if not, if we, let's say we go down, we concede a goal. That attack is more than good enough to score two or three against Newcastle. Very, very easily. So I, I would probably go for the first thing because it's... The first thing that I said, because it's more safe. However, I would be very strongly considering just throwing Van der Beek in there and seeing how he gets on in a game like this. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, hey? Now, let's talk about Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, Cristiano Ronaldo is undoubtedly the best player currently playing to have ever played for Manchester United, and he's back. Do What do I think of the signing? I, I mean, I've said it before. Ronaldo, while he is a great signing and a great player, he's not what we needed. And this idea that Cristiano Ronaldo all of a sudden will push us on to go win the league, I don't. I still don't think it's true. I think he is a fantastic player. Would I have taken a defensive midfielder? Would I take Manuel Locatelli, for example? Maybe he's not an a out-and-out DM, but just an example of someone who went to Juventus. Would I have taken him over Cristiano Ronaldo? Would I have taken a Bentancourt, a Rabiot, from Juventus instead of Cristiano Ronaldo. Yes, I would. But Cristiano Ronaldo is a player that guarantees you goals, will bring a winning mentality to the club. And you do not sign Cristiano Ronaldo and not go and win the league. You can't do that. Do I do I expect to win the Premier League with this squad, especially with that midfield? No, I don't. I don't think it's strong enough because you are missing, for me, probably the most important midfielder in the team and that's a defensive midfielder you the player that dictates the tempo gets the ball of the center backs sets the tempo dictates the game we don't have that so i think it will be a bit difficult without a dm to win the league but we have to be we have to have to have to be at least in the conversation come the end of the season maybe we just miss out there's a lot of other strong teams in this league but we have to be in the conversation and we only can be in the conversation if we're winning games like this Newcastle game where you expect to win it and win it fairly comfortably. And I think we will, to be honest. I'm going to go for a 4-0 Manchester United win. Like I said, this Newcastle team, they're 17th in the league. We are stronger than them. We've got an incredible attack. There is no reason not to be scoring plenty of goals in this game and winning it comfortably and setting a market and a precedent for the future. Make teams scared to come against us. I think we can do that in this game. Anyway, thank you all for watching um, this match preview. If you have enjoyed, please do hit the like button below and subscribe if you are new and you haven't already. That would be greatly appreciated. Like I said, unfortunately, there is no watch long for this game, but we will be back for the young boys watch long midweek in the Champions League as our Champions League campaign starts. So that is going to be it. Thank you all for watching. Let me know down below in the comments your prediction for this game, and I'll see you all in the next one in a bit. Peace.